So in this video, we're going to talk about the ancient Greek mathematician Eratosthenes. Um, there's a artist rendering of him. Eratosthenes was born around 276 BCE and died around 194 BCE. Or in other words, he lived around the uh, the uh, third century BCE, uh, late third century BCE and died in the early 2nd century. He was born in Cyrene, northern Africa, which is in present-day Libya. He did uh, study in Cyrene and uh, worked there some, and also in Athens, before ultimately landing in, guess where? Alexandria. In fact, he became the third librarian there at the library and museum in Alexandria. So really, you need to uh, associate him with Alexandria. Uh, he was known for his work on primes and measuring the Earth. Those are probably his two biggest claim to fame. He measured the circumference of the Earth by comparing the lengths and angles of noon shadows at midsummer between uh, Syene, uh, it's a present day Aswan in Egypt, and Alexandria, Egypt. He calculated the circumference of the work as 250,000 uh, stadia, and there's some scholarly disagreement on exactly what uh, the exact length of a stadia uh, in his time. Uh, so this was either a pretty good estimate, perhaps as much as almost 17% too big, or a really great estimate depending on the definition of stadia. Uh, probably he was a little high, but this diagram over here gives uh, some uh, idea of what, what he was working on. He's assumed that the rays of the sun were basically parallel, and the sun is actually far enough from the earth that that's a reasonable assumption. And they knew that on this certain day that the sun shone directly down uh, a well uh, there in uh, Syene. And then he knew uh, how far, measured in this unit of stadia, it was to Alexandria. And he knew that it wasn't straight up and down. Straight up and down was, was here at Alexandria. And he was able to measure that distance. Now, it was pretty well known at this point that, that the Earth was more or less a sphere. Uh, but we didn't know how big it was. And we, he, uh, Aristoth Aristosthenes, was the first one to really, uh, that we know of, that actually came up with an estimate of how big the Earth is and actually measured it. And so he basically used some, some trigonometry here basically to figure this out and figure out then uh, the, the radius uh, of the Earth and of course then its diameter and its, and its circumference. Uh, he also uh, gave good estimates for the tilt of the Earth's axis, and he developed a calendar that even included leak beers, so a fairly sophisticated calendar. He is also known for making a chronology of world events, uh, going back to the fall of Troy, and a catalog of the stars. So several things that he did there. Uh, one of the other things that he's most famous for is something called the Sieve of Aristophanes. And this sieve is a way of finding out which numbers are prime numbers. Now, remember a definition of a prime number. A prime number is a number with exactly two factors, which, of course, one in itself. If you said uh, the definition of a prime number is a number whose only factors are one in itself, you are very close to the right definition. But one is not considered a prime number. It's neither prime nor composite. It's in a class by itself. Its only factors are one in itself, but that's only one number. Okay, so one is a class by itself, so we sort of remove that first. And we list, <clears throat> list the numbers, say up to 100 or 99 here that I've listed. And the way the sieve works is this. Once we've eliminated one, we go to the next one that's not eliminated. I'm going to color it orange. This is sort of a colorful version of the sieve. And that two is prime. All the other multiples of 2, all the multiples of 2 up to 99 are denoted in red. So it's it's a basic pattern is uh, shade 1, skip 1, shade 1, skip 1, so forth. 
But you also see some other interesting patterns, <clears throat> which are actually a, a artifact or a function of our numeration system. Whether a number is divisible by 2 is a feature of the number itself, but the, the rules that you would come up would be a feature of our numeration system. So in base 10, if it ends in a 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8, in other words, the last digit is divisible by 2, then that is, uh, you see it's shaded in red here, the corner shaded in red. So those numbers are, uh, other than 2 itself, those numbers are composite because they have factors 1 itself and 2 at least. So remember, a composite number is a number with at least three factors. So those numbers sort of fell through the sieve. I mean, a sieve is like a, a strainer, a colander, a sieve. It catches things. And so here it catches the primes, so it counts the prime two. Then the next number we go to that's not been caught by the sieve or not been uh, passed through the sieve as a composite number is a number three. So it's a prime number, so we shade it orange. Here we shaded the multiples of 3 with the blue in the upper right corner. So that's the pattern, of course, is skip 2, shade 1. So skip 2, shade 1, skip 2, shade 1, and so forth. Notice that the first, that the t uh, 6 is a prime, is, is a composite, but it's already a, a multiple of 2. It's 2 times 3. It's a multiple of 2 and 3. The first one that we picked up that was not a multiple of 2, the first one that goes through the sieve, composite number that's not already a multiple uh, went through when we checked for multiples of 2 was 9, which, by the way, notice is 3 times 3, and so forth. And we go on and, sh and shade those down. Some interesting patterns here. The blue, if you look at the blue, you got on the diagonal here. These on this diagonal, if you notice, all those digits sum up to 3. If you look on this diagonal, the digits sum up to 6. On this diagonal, they sum up to 9. On this diagonal, they sum up to 12. On this diagonal, they sum up to 15. And here on this diagonal, if you would continue down, they sum up to 18. So if you look at, there's a nice little rule there that says that a number is multiple of 3 uh, if and only if the sum of its digits is a multiple of 3. All right, so then we look here. Well, 4 is already composite. It's, it's gone through. It's got its already shaded corner. So the next one that was unshaded anywhere would have been 5. And so we shade the multiples of 5 here, and they fall through the sieve. Do the same, and notice they're in the column here with ending at a 0 or 5. And then we check um, uh, the next one is 7. The first one that falls through the sieve that's not already fallen through their sieve would be 7 square, which is 49 right here. Okay, and then you go on down. Uh, and look, the next prime would be 11. So think about a minute. The first one that would fall through the sieve that hasn't already fallen through would be 11 times 11, 121. Now, if our if our my list of numbers went down that far, I would need to check for the multiples of 11. But if I'd go anything less than 121, then we have all the primes. So now you can look through and see the things that aren't shaded at all, and that. Uh, in the corners, and that turns out to be all of the ones that I've got shaded in orange here, and those are the primes. And so now we have discovered and identified all of the primes, uh, prime numbers from all the way, uh, natural numbers up to, well, really up to, well, up to 99 at least, or up to 100 um, that we have here in this particular thing. Of course, you can continue this process. You just make the, uh, the list of numbers go down further, uh, if it goes down to 121, uh, we have to go through and check the multiples of 11 as well. We could actually just start at 121 and go for the, from there. Um, and then the same thing, you know, it, it's, you just have to check up to the square root or the square of whatever prime you're checking. So that is a way to, to get the uh, sieve of Aristophanes is uh, a nice way to check for for primes, for the smaller ones for sure, and uh, this is a this colorful way of doing it gives you some nice number patterns that you can ex expand upon and, and discover a little bit of some of the uh, divisibility rules as well. So, Eratosthenes was known for measuring the Earth and for working with primes.